Uh, just a quick video, I thought I would show something amusing. Now, this is an old PC chassis I'm just reusing for a uh, basic system I need to perform a function. Don't want to spend any money, I'm just recycling old bits I've got. Anyway, just started taking it apart and I've just realised what this system is. This is my first DVD player. Um, back when DVD players first came out, consumer DVD players were very expensive. You're looking at £500 plus. If you were a PC owner with a reasonable spec PC, it was actually more cost effective to buy a drive. So this, I believe, is a single speed Pioneer slot-in drive. These are awesome. It's just like a car stereo where you just put them in, no tray. Don't know why they don't use these anymore on PCs. But anyway, um, yeah, they're fairly expensive still, but just a bit cheaper than buying a consumer player. And I felt it was more useful at the time as well. So we've got this drive. I'm just going to open up the PC and we'll have a look at what the spec is. And what I'll show you what else you needed to run uh, a DVD player in a PC. Right, I've pulled out the cables just to make it a bit easier to see everything. A little bit dusty in here, given the age of this system. Uh, it's not surprising. Uh, we'll check out some date codes in a minute. In fact, I think I see one. January 1999. That's a Pioneer 103S. Okay, I might have been misremembering this a little bit. That is not a single speed. That's going to be a six speed. But still very old, very early. DVD player. I'm not sure if that was my first drive then, if that, or if that was a replacement. Hmm, kind of makes sense. Uh, anyway, so let's go back to the motherboard. The motherboard's a bit more exciting than I remember. It's actually an ABIT BP6. Uh, this was the first affordable uh, Celeron, dual Celeron board. So you've got, I didn't actually have two CPUs in it this time when I was using it as a media PC. But uh, yeah. Uh, dual Celeron motherboard. How exciting is that? This is you know, quite an uncommon thing, but uh, really good board back in the day because it was overclockable and like I say you could stick the dual CPUs in. That was quite unusual. Not sure what RAM we've got in here. What we're going to reckon? 64 meg? 128 meg? Something like that. that would be about right for 99 or a media PC. Uh, oh. PC 133, 128 megabytes. Fantastic. Uh, hate to think what that would cost back then. Look at this crap. <laughs> it's quite funny, isn't it? You only needed crappy little unbranded CPU coolers back in the day on these old. I'm not sure what CPU's in here. It's not even got. <laughs> it's not even got heatsink compound. Probably didn't need it on these. I can't read that. I'm going to have to pull that out and see what it is. Um, one second. I've just pulled the CPU out, it's actually got the label on the back. I don't remember them being like this, but there you go. So it's a 500 megahertz Celeron, eh? Fantastic. But that was exciting back in the day. Uh, super crappy Macron power supply, never heard of those. Uh, 250 watt. Ah, my, I've got, I think my current AMD CPU uses probably that much. Um, yeah, old Celeron, eh? Right, so anyway, let's get back to this. So. What we did was back in the day, you bought your DVD drive, and because the PC like this was not going to be good enough for actually doing the MPEG decoding required on the DVD, what you did was you stuck in an extra card, and I'm hoping it's this one. I haven't actually looked yet, but we had to have a dedicated uh, MPEG decoder card. Doesn't come out very smoothly. Oh, that's it. Real Magic DVD. That is an MPEG decoder card. So there you go. If, unless you were an early DVD adopter, you've probably never seen one of these. Um, I think what you had to do was, I think you had to do pass-through into the graphics card, if I remember rightly, which is some ATI piece of crap. Let's have a look what we've got. I can't read that, obvious at this stage. What is it? Rage LT Pro. Woo, that was probably not so great back in the day. So it's got S video output. I assume that's why I've got that one, just for use on the TV. So yeah, you needed this uh, MPEG code at Dakota Card, or you couldn't use your DVD player. So, but I say, even buying this card, buying the DVD drive, putting into a decent spec PC was cheaper than buying a consumer drive. And I was an early adopter of. I said, I'm not sure if I don't think that was my original drive now. I'm sure I had a single speed one of those, but what else have we got in here? That's a network card that I can't get out. Is it still screwed in? No, it's just stuck. Oh, these old PCIs are really hard to get out. 
Right, what have we got? Real tech, generic. 10100 graphics card. Ooh, sound card. <laughs> sound card's the thing of the past. Oh, not even really gentle with these, but I don't care because I'm <laughs> not going to use any of this stuff again. Right, we've got sound and gamepad connector, like we used to have in the old days. Hey! So, excuse me while I just clean that. It's a creative or. I'm not seeing the label. There we go. Sound Blaster or 64. Ah, yes, I remember these. These were getting quite low cost by this stage. So it was, you know, it's all the default card to get. So there you go. That was a quick look at an ancient DVD playing PC. This was actually sat on my uh, TV stand. And it has actually been sat on the back of my TV stand for several years now. Because I, I hadn't bothered moving it. Um, oh, hard drive. What have I got it here? Let's see if I can get that out. Oh, one second. Right, pulled the dusty hard drive out. It's a Fujitsu M1623. That'll be a 1.7 gigahertz. Uh, gigahertz. We're talking about gigabyte drive. And look at that date code 1996. So this system had some parts that were a bit older than 99. Now, uh, Fujitsu were quite popular back in the day in the sort of mid to late 90s unfortunately they uh, basically screwed over all their customers at one point they made the mpg and was it the mp i can't remember if it was the mpf or the mph so it was bad but definitely the mpg drives um, basically they made a whole bunch of drives that died after about 13 months so you had a, a year warranty and then on the 13th month they would die almost guaranteed to fail um, and what it was it was one of the controller chips on the board um, I don't think these ones use the old silicon, I think it was, uh, was it silicon image or something graphic, or, something? I can't remember. or was it serious logic even, I can't remember now, can't remember, anyway, um, what the problem was, was the drive controller chip failed after about 13 months, now Fujitsu completely denied the problem, they refused to refund or help towards the cost of replacing the drives or anything, they basically said tough luck, screw you, um, which was really bad because every single drive was failing pretty much. Um, I remember I had a computer shop back in the day and I was doing like a data recovery service where we'd swap parts of drives over to try and get data off because sometimes you could actually swap the controller out onto a drive they didn't they didn't work as well because they weren't they didn't have the right calibration settings so they were either really slow or unreliable when you swap the uh, electronics over but you could at least get some data off um yeah i had personally got stung because i was let's say kind of computer shop i had a load of systems that had the drives in ones i've sold to customers i had to replace um yeah, Fujitsu didn't want to have anything to do with it, and that's why I will never, ever, ever trust Fujitsu again in my life because they were such assholes when it came to replacing these drives. Um, but anyway, it was basically proven that they were lying because they there was actually an active lawsuit from Fujitsu to whoever was the manufacturer of the chip. They were trying to sue them for making faulty chips while denying to their customers that it was actually a problem. So, uh, that's a shame, but it brings back bad memories, that one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed a quick look at what is now a calculator in, in power compared to modern computers, but was exactly the sort of thing you'd want to have if you were an early DVD adopter. Thanks for watching.